the reason root cause what i mean by root cause is like the real reason of why this is happening deep down it might not be a skin problem even if it's eczema and it might not be a lung problem even if it's asthma but the root warning warning as a medical doctor i must inform you that there are side effects to this coaching session beware it may enhance your self-esteem cause you to experience vibrant health encounter long-term weight loss heal damaged relationships warning there are side effects to this coaching session it may increase your enthusiasm for life and bring about hope it may cause you to have productive and optimistic thinking it could even help you not allow messed up people to ruin the rest of your life and help you realize the masterpiece that you are and empower you to be the boss of your brain. Warning, these side effects may be long term. This is Dr. Isabel from DrOnAMission.com. Hello, Dr. Nellie Gluzman. I am so glad you are finally here with me on the MD and Chef Team podcast. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm so excited because I'm a huge, huge fan. Thank you. And I really love what you're doing. I'm going to go ahead and share with the world who you are, what you're doing, and how you are serving families around the world. Dr. Nellie Gluzman is founder and head physician at Blossom Pediatrics, has dedicated herself to helping families rescue their children's health. Her passion for her work was born out of the transformational healing she first created for her own daughter. After successfully rescuing her daughter's health, good on you, girl. She, ad she adopted a customized blending of functional and integrative medicine. This approach addresses the root cause of chronic childhood symptoms through the use of natural and scientifically proven treatments. By focusing on the root cause, this allows the child to experience a complete reversal of everyday symptoms along with the elimination of long-term conditions as well. While working with the sickest children inside the hospitals of New York, as well as running her own practice, Dr. Nellie Glusman has used her decade of training and experience to help thousands of children regain and sustain optimal health. She works closely with families to address all the factors that influence health, wellness, and disease, including body, mind, spirit, and community. Dr. Mom, hello, Dr. Mom, as her parents have found, fondly nicknamed her, is dedicated to helping each child find relief from their illness, allowing them to live happier, healthier, and more fulfilling lives. I love it, Nellie. It's the thank you. It's the approach we should, we can take for all the different parts of our lives. Yes, all parts. I want to just let everybody know where you are right now in this room. And if they <laughs> hear bells and alarms, it's because where are you? I am coming to you live from a <laughs> hospital. So I'm, I'm, in, I'm in a call room. Um, and so you might hear some emergencies. And as you know, I'm in New York. So we have been hit pretty hard and uh, my roots are in hospitalist medicine and I, I still, I love it very much. And so I still fill in as much as I'm needed in the hospital system. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's where we're coming, where I'm recording from. Okay, cool. So if we hear that, that's okay. It is what it is, right? Absolutely. Like anything else in life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I understand that you specialize in the triad of eczema, allergies, and asthma. And oh my gosh, those are huge, aren't they? Uh, unfortunately, it, it, those are huge. They've always been something that children tend to suffer from, but more and more, um, more children are suffering from these ailments that are considered chronic than ever before. And the numbers are staggering now. And 
it's not that I chose these particular ailments to focus on. It, it kind of chose me because working um, with lots of kids who have chronic childhood illnesses, what most parents ended up coming to me with and what my own child has suffered from are the eczemas, the asthmas, and the allergies. So it's something that keeps coming up and coming up. And so I ended up specializing in this because there's such a huge need, not just to treat symptoms, which we can do very well and very effectively in conventional medicine, but to reverse these chronic childhood illnesses. Permanently. Key, 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 key. Tell me, tell us your story. Tell, tell us what happened with you and your daughter. Because you know what? It's really out of our own misery, right? That we get to become experts in this area, right? Is that correct? Yeah, it, it, it was from my daughter's misery. I was really, really scared for her. And I was already a pediatrician when she was born and I thought I knew it all. And I was really good at getting kids who are hospitalized with things like pneumonia or the problems associated with having asthma exacerbations or having severe allergies. So you need to calm that down. Our conventional medicines are lifesavers. They work really well to reverse life-threatening emergencies. As, as, as you know, you know, we have all the steroids and the albuterol to open up the airway. We could decrease the inflammation. And so I thought I knew it all, making sure that these kids <laughs> go home with their parents. And until my own daughter started to have these issues and more, and I realized that I had no idea how to keep her healthy. And so in, in conventional pediatrics or in conventional medicine, usually we can prescribe these medicines to stop the symptoms. But if we're not also reversing the root cause of what's happening in the first place, we're always gonna be one step behind. And, and that's the trouble that I found myself in with my daughter when she was about three years old. I knew that it was only half the solution. What was not, going on? What happened with your daughter? She just kept getting sick and every little virus would turn into a bacterial infection. And I know, I know you parents listening out there. Yes, it is absolutely normal and okay for kids to have colds, but it is not okay for your kids to not be able to fight anything off. And so every time there was like a little virus, there would be a bacterial infection and antibiotics, which would happen multiple times a month and, and uh, sinus infections, ear infections, nonstop. And then rashes came and, and then, you know, her gut health was affected and she was miserable. Uh, she would ask me sometimes, mom, why does this keep happening? She was like three or four. I felt so bad. I felt horrible. And I could really feel how every, all the other parents must be feeling if I, as a well-trained pediatrician didn't know how to help my own kids stay healthy, well then it must be even harder for parents who are looking for solutions out there. So I was able to find the solutions and it was like magic. They're not that complicated. It's accessible to anyone. It doesn't require a huge cost. It's not a huge commitment. And the, young, the, the earlier you start, in reversing these problems, the easier it is. And so I've dedicated my practice and my life to helping other families and other kids who are in the same bind and having these chronic symptoms over and over again and not being okay with just treating the symptoms. I so get that story. I experienced the same thing with my youngest daughter who was born and she, her skin, I remember coming home one day because my husband was a stay-at-home father mm -hmm. and her bottom was just red and her skin was just red. And I put on, you know, what we're taught to do, steroids, creams, antihistamines, all the stuff we're, we're supposed to do. And it just, you know, how it gets infected from the scratching and we would tie up her 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 hands, her shirt, so she wouldn't scratch at night. And I felt the same way as you did. Like, oh my gosh, what a terrible yeah. mom I am. Oh yeah, the guilt. And you parents, your moms and dads listening out there, you're definitely not alone. Um, it, it, it is scary to see your kids struggling and it is really terrible to, make, to see them not sleeping at night because they're scratching or not knowing which steroid to use, like which one is the best steroid cream or worrying about the side effects of, the, of all, all the medications because they're not without risk. 
or making you know having your kid go to all these specialists over and over again yeah uh, worrying if you go to grandma's house did you take the medications with you or the parents who have kids with allergies uh worrying about what's in that cupcake at that birthday party all those are huge worries and as parents we worry about them and our, our kids also might be suffering a lot of the 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 concerns and worries as well it builds up after time but this is all really scary and bad news the good news is that it is reversible and if there's any message that i can just leave with you for this whole entire segment it's that there's so much you can do to reverse it and all the solutions are at your fingertips and if you're not satisfied with the solution that's in front of you right now in the world of conventional medicine you can also also look outside of conventional medicine for a more holistic functional integrative approach absolutely absolutely so you know let's talk about the root cause what do you can we talk about the root cause because you and i are taught how to do the band-aid medicine in yeah. conventional medicine we're never taught to go to the root cause what kind of root causes are we talking about root causes and their solutions so the root causes the reason what root cause what i mean by root cause is like the real reason of why this is happening deep down it might not be a skin problem even if it's eczema and it might not be a lung problem even if it's asthma but the root cause it, it's as varied as a child has symptoms so there's many different multifactorial reasons why uh this these things could be happening but i would say that a great place to start would be to look at your child's gut health mm. first and foremost because i truly feel that this is something that a lot of kids are inherently born with having some dysbiosis or it's not perfect you know there's so many antibiotics that a child's parents might have used and antibiotics that were used during delivery maybe or maybe not and all the different antibiotics and toxins that are in the environment that you can't really always avoid and so all that mostly first and foremost affects gut health and that's also a really easy place to start reversing these problems and i feel like has the most benefit and so reversing gut dysbiosis or issues that are causing not the right kind of good bacteria or a good diverse amount of the good bacteria that helps you digest and keeps the integrity of the gut lining healthy and helps uh, helps a child detox. If that's not in order, then nothing else will really work as well as it could be working. And addressing that is also really easy and it doesn't require a lot of magic it, it really is just like it, it could be done for anybody using a nutritional approach and a nutritional approach is something that is accessible to almost all of us if we choose to access it and that's why i start with reversing issues with gut health and even when a child doesn't necessarily have problems with gut health like constipation or diarrhea or frequent abdominal pain or bloating or um even you know, just like a lot of gas or burping, even if those are not the case, and most of the time they do go hand in hand with these chronic illnesses. Mm -hmm. But even if not, this is the, I feel like a good place to start because this is one main reason why um, the, the kids have so many chronic childhood illnesses, especially eczema, asthma, and allergies. And how would you, you know, like one or two things that you would start doing to help? Okay, uh, so the the I get this question all the time, and I feel like <laughs> I I love this question because oh good, <laughs> it's really it's really simple. May may I have three three different things I would do say go for it. <laughs> okay, so the first is to heal the gut lining by using different kinds of foods that literally heal and seal the gut lining as medicine. And those would be very healthy fats that are used medicinally. And what I mean by that is stocks and broths, mm -hmm. especially animal or fish, stocks and broths. Stocks and broths um, have the right kinds of fats and collagens, especially when they're prepared properly to literally heal and seal the gut lining so that everything else that you do on top of that is going to stick. Second solution, restore a diverse and healthy microbiome. This is 
the key to life. No human can survive without a healthy and diverse microbiome. Most diseases that we see that are inflammatory can be tremendously helped if not reversed by restoring the good bacteria, the good viruses, the good yeast, the good, the good ecosystem in the gut. How do we do that? Well, yes, there's supplements, but an even more holistic approach that I find I, I use in my practice every day medicinally is to use a ton of ferments, fermented foods. Mm -hmm. Fermented foods are foods that naturally contain beneficial bacteria or probiotics in massive quantities in a very safe way. And it's extremely affordable. Not only do fermented foods have the right probiotics, but they're also very nutritionally sound and they help you digest other foods. Like it's what a, kind of ferments? What, what kind of ferments for everybody? Like I always say a ferment a day keeps the doctor away. And the one that I start <laughs> with, the one, <laughs> I know, and the one that I usually start with and go for is sauerkraut. And that's fermented cabbage. And I have my reasons why. I, I feel like it's also, it's really easy to buy, but if you want to make it yourself, which I really empower you to try at least once in your life and maybe more. Uh, sauerkraut is just cabbage and salt. It is really easy to make. It's like the easiest to make. And so it's the hardest to mess up. And all you need is a head of cabbage, really good organic cabbage with some soil on it. The real deal, like go to your farmer's market and get it. It's available locally in most places. It has a very long season. And so it's really easy to get good high quality, fresh cabbage, like straight from the farm with good some soil on it. Sauerkraut is may, needs a, a lactobacillus or a, a bacteria to ferment. And it has its own natural bacteria. And so you don't need to add anything special. You don't need to buy anything. You just chop it up, uh, add salt, a good high quality, like Celtic sea salt is Celtic sea salt. Uh, it's one of my favorites, it has tons of minerals. You mush it up, let the, the liquid come out of, of it because that's what salt does. It pulls it out, it will also preserve it. Pack it in real tight in a glass jar, which most of us might have at home already and leave it on the counter sitting its own brine with something really heavy on top so nothing floats to the top. And within like maybe four days and then some, maybe up to two weeks, you'll start to have the most potent probiotic that you, uh, you could possibly find. When you look at probiotics that we buy in the store, they're wonderful, they do help tremendously. And those probiotics are measured in colony forming units. And they'll say like, this is how many live uh, strains there are, there might be like 5 billion colony forming units. But in one tablespoon of freshly fermented sauerkraut, you will have 1.5 trillion organisms. So how can you compete with that? How can you compete with that? That's how many stars there are in our solar system. Wow. <laughs> I love it. Now, what was the liquid you put into it? Just water? Just water. Just yes. water. And that's all you need. So, yes. uh, cabbage, salt, water, and a glass jar. That's it. Yes. That's it. I know Chef Michael does that all the time. He, he gets like four or five of them ready and he puts them on our cupboard and you can kind of, it's really cool because that packing, you have to take off that packing of the, the cabbage. I go, babe, oh. what's this for? And he goes, oh, you don't eat that. You take it off and then you can start eating. It's beautiful. There's something about the sauerkraut that we're buying at the grocery store. It's inactivated. Yes. Yeah, so you have to be really careful. There are some brands that do it right, but it's actually really rare because, and I understand why, because when you mass produce these live organisms, you want to make sure that there's no mold growing in it. And so you, you don't want like a little bit of mold spoiling no. a whole batch. No, that would no. be really, really bad for production. And so a lot of times, yes, you could buy sauerkraut in a store, um, it might be absolutely delicious, but there might be preservatives added to that in the form of like a vinegar or maybe some citric acid or anything else that hinders the different kinds of mold from growing. But at the same time, it will also hinder the bacteria from propagating. And so you're kind of left with um, just a really delicious food, but it's not necessarily a healing food. So I've been using fermented foods and different kinds in my practice and in, 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 in reversing so many of these chronic problems. And not only will you see 
um, when used properly every day, multiple times a day, eat it with every meal, even just a little bit. And for you parents are, who are like, mm, I don't know if my three-year-old or five-year-old is going to go for it. I <laughs> could assure you that it's not so bad. And um, you just need a tiny, tiny little amount and you could hide it in food. So you could use it as seasoning. You could put it on something that's not too hot, maybe a soup or a stew or a baked potato or anything else that your kid likes. Put that on there and you'll have the same benefit. You don't need to actually eat buckets full of it. Mm -hmm. You just need a very small amount and you need it every day and anyone can use it. And it's safe and it's really important. This kind of uh, fell out of uh, popularity in the past few decades in the US. But most traditional cultures, which I've, I'm just obsessed with studying how they have fought disease in the past and how, you know, what are the secrets that are starting to be forgotten in traditional cultures and traditional medicines, this was a staple in every single traditional culture. And if you go and you ask your great grandma what she was eating every day, I could assure you that no matter what part of the planet you were from, there was some kind of ferment in that diet. So I'm trying to bring that back because it really does help tremendously. You're doing great. You're absolutely doing great. So we got the broths, we got the fermented foods, and, you and said the third <laughs> is stop eating food that's not food oh well said so you know some of us might already know that processed sugars might not be the best for a child and colorings might not be serving them or uh, different preservatives are not necessarily going to help them thrive but there's something else that i found to be of importance because very few people really know about it i mean when i ask my medical students and residents who i train about this not none of them knew <laughs> it's the fact that we need to soak at least soak and maybe even sometimes sprout the different kinds of grains nuts and seeds that, that we eat in our, in our society, which could be a lot. Because when you're eating grains, nuts, seeds, you know, you, you kind of want to take that coating off and turn it into a live food. Because that coating that makes it a seed or a nut or a grain has a lot of something called anti-nutrients. And in, you know, or even beans, or a little bit here and there is not going to hurt you. But in our traditional, and I know you're in New Zealand and I'm in, in America, but in like a traditional Western diet, which is where I am. Um, oh, and I, me too, we're, yeah. we're Western here too. <laughs> yeah, I would say there's, there's a ton of emphasis being placed on grains and even um, like beans and legumes. Mm -hmm. And so all, if, if you're having such a large quantity of that, you need to make it right. And soaking it takes starts to take off that anti-nutrient coating, which helps the seed preserve itself. And so that it's, it's uh, evolutionary. Um, as a plant makes that seed in with a coating of phytates and other anti-nutrients so that an animal comes, eats it, and then poops it out somewhere else and that plant can grow. But what that does to a human organism, to the human gut is, and not only prevents that, that food from being digested properly, it helps, it doesn't allow other foods to be digested properly. And that is especially uh, problematic in a growing child because they could use all the nutrients that they could get. And so soaking and sprouting is what reverses this problem. And I guess that would be my third, uh, third place to start. My mm -hmm. third recommendation of where to start to think about reversing a lot of these illnesses. And of course, once you have all that down packed and you're doing that for a while, then you could start doing some targeted healing with, with a practitioner, maybe a functional medicine doctor, an integrative doc, or maybe like someone that practices holistic medicine or knows herbs. But these are the baseline, baseline, bottom line things that need to be done in order to optimize nutrition, heal the gut, so that everything else that you're changing can actually work well. Perfect. I love, I'm a simple minded person. I love simple things. So those are easy. One broths. He first heal the gut one broths Two, 
he, you know, do your fermented foods and three, stay away. I mean, start sprouting your, your legumes, your seeds, start making your food digestible so it's easy to absorb and you've got, you're able to use the nutrition from that. Yeah. And I, stay I, away from processed foods. Oh my gosh. The leaky yeah. gut that's going on is unbelievable. Yes, and leaky gut has is tied very closely to eczema, asthma, and allergies. Yes. And the more there are so many studies that are showing this. And you know, there's there are a few myths that are going around that these like eczema, asthma, and allergies, your child is just gonna outgrow it. How many times have you heard that before? My kid is, you know, my this is because it's genetic, which by the way, it's not just genetic. We know that there's a study of epigenetics and that the mm -hmm. environment influences genetics in a very massive, serious way. And so what is environment? Environment is not only what's outside your child's body, but inside your child's body. And so by making these changes, we're changing the environment. And so although your kid might have a genetic predisposition to having these problems, it does not mean that this is their fate. And I feel right. like- it is so disempowering to be told that as a parent, like it, it's just not true. And there's so many things that you can do to make sure that the genetics that your child is predisposed to, whether, whether that be the eczema, asthma, allergies, or, or even things like autoimmune disease, in, if that's running in the family, anything else, epigenetics, how the environment influences genetics has nothing on genetics. And I want you parents to be empowered to understand and know that there are so many things you can do that are more powerful than genetics. Another myth, if you don't mind mentioning, is that- I just, I just want to kind of in, interject here about epigenetics is you're absolutely right. People need to understand that just because you've got that DNA doesn't mean you will express it. You don't have to express certain genes like your asthma genes, your type two diabetes genes, your Alzheimer's genes, you know, just expanding the gene talk. Epigenetics is exactly that. The environment affects our genes and we can either turn on the genes or turn off the genes. And what you're showing us is you can turn off a lot of the eczema, the skin, the, the asthma and the, um, the allergies by the foods we're eating. Yes, absolutely. And that gives people hope, which is so important. Now you wanted to say about something about another myth. <laughs> I'm so excited to share this. Well, it's a little sad and, 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 I, and I, it's a pet peeve of mine. I just hate it when families are told that, you know, your child is just going to outgrow this. I don't want to hear that as a parent. I want to hear, you know, definitely will outgrow it not maybe will outgrow but definitely and when we want this now um and uh more and more we're seeing the numbers come out where there are more adults having these problems than children so if there are more adults having eczema asthma allergies the severity of the asthma and the severity of the allergies and the severity of 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 all these these chronic problems it's getting worse and worse then who is outgrowing it Perhaps it was a transient thing 20 years ago, but the current uh, data is not showing that kids will definitely outgrow it. And as a parent, I would like to know what I can do to make sure that things are reversed now and not just sitting around and waiting and hoping and watching your child suffering in the meantime. And so, yes. so it's a myth and, and I, I kind of want to debunk it because it's dangerous, it's disempowering to parents. And I want you parents to be empowered. I know because we're with the kid all the time. Yeah. And, you know, I wanted to give, do a shout out about mm -hmm. something that you've done to empower parents called the 30 day online course called rescue your child's health. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And I will let everybody know that you'll have a link to this. Chef yeah. Michael will put together the link to this, but tell oh. us about your online course. I yeah. went and took a look at it and I was like, oh my gosh, we got to talk about this. So this is my uh, passion project and that's where my heart lives. I, <laughs> I, I work with families one-on-one -on -one in my practice, Blossom Pediatrics in New York, but not everyone can get to New York. And 
Um, and there's a big need for, for information that is co easy to follow step-by-step. Step. I love courses, I love learning. So I've created a course that is all the information that you need as a parent to get started because very, very often there is a lot of information out there. You don't really know where to begin it's overwhelming there mm -hmm. there's a lot of great information but like what are the exact steps that you need to take right now week by week from a pediatrician that practices holistic medicine to reverse the root cause of these chronic childhood illnesses and this uh this live program this live course with me addresses this exact question what do i need to do as a parent to start getting my child to be healthy again so that they're thriving and they're sleeping at night and they don't need all these medications and so that using all the steroids and having all these specialists is, is a thing of the past and that must feel so good getting all the responses back people saying wow you have changed our family you've changed my that. child's health <laughs> That yeah. must make you feel so good as a doctor, right? I mean, that's what we go into medicine. It really does. It, it really does. And I'm also teaching this program to my residents and, and medical students. And so I feel like the conventional world is definitely open, opening up, at least where I am, yes. to concepts and, and being more open to the fact that we can help our children using a, a holistic nutritional approach that looks at the root cause, giving the child the building blocks they need to heal. Um, so that's, yes, it does feel amazing. And, and I'm so, so genuinely grateful for the opportunity to, to share this information and to grow with my, with the families. And, and I love it when they keep in touch and, you know, we, we keep in touch with each other. It becomes like a family and I feel really strongly connected to everybody. And so, yeah, um, it is a great honor to be able to practice medicine this way. I, yes, I agree. And you had to go through that struggle with your daughter to be able to have this victory so you can share with the world. So first of all, I applaud you for going through the struggle instead of giving up because I know how hard that is. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, it, I feel like, like there's no mistakes that, um, and even my own daughter, she walks around, she hears me teaching everything and she's eight now and she'll just like re literally repeat everything I've said to her friends. So like, <laughs> <"Why>? <laughs> you want to talk about ferments? <laughs> <laughs> and she, when people come over, she offers them celery juice. <laughs> it's kind of cute. <laughs> oh, that's great. Hey, that's how you create a health leader, right? Beginning in the home. And then she and then she teaches her whole her whole group. Yeah, I spread the it. word. Spread the word. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I'm glad the alarm didn't go off. Thank you. It was such an honor to speak with you. I love listening to you talk. It's so so exciting to be on. And thanks. And, and we'll do this again. Thank you. We'll do this again, honey. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. You too. Bye. Bye. Everybody. Bye. Bye.